If you'd like, you can put a dollop of banana ketchup to eat with your embutido. It's really good. Mmm. I personally don't mind having raisins in my savory Filipino dishes anymore. I leveled up, but I know you do. So now it's time to take matters into your own hands and learn how to make embutido at home. Because all the other embutido that you're going to find at the stores are probably going to have raisins in it. Okay, so this recipe is fairly simple. It just takes some time because you have to steam it, but we're going to start with a big old bowl. So the first thing you're gonna do is add one pound of ground meat, and it can be ground chicken, ground beef, ground pork, or any combination of those guys. Here I'm gonna be using one pound of ground beef, and then one pound of ground pork. Usually when you add ground pork to a recipe, it makes it taste so much better. Next, we're gonna crack two eggs in here so that it can help bind it together. And then I'm gonna put in one medium minced or shredded carrots. And in here, I also have one medium onion that's been shredded slash minced in my veggie bullet. I'm also gonna put in one finely minced bell pepper in here. You can do carrots, bell peppers, and onions, but if you don't have any of these, you can go ahead and look in your fridge to see what other vegetables you can put in here. Gotta get your veggies in. Next, I'm gonna add one and one half cup of breadcrumbs. These are panko breadcrumbs, but you can just use normal breadcrumbs or you can use chopped up bread, crackers, pretzels, or cornflakes, whichever ones you have at home. So what the breadcrumbs do is it traps the moisture in your meatloaf or embutido so that it stays moist and juicy. All right, and so for some flavor, I'm gonna add one tablespoon of sugar, two teaspoons of apple cider vinegar, and then one tablespoon of my handy dandy fish sauce. If you don't have a fish sauce bottle by now, Go get one. I put a link in the description below. It'll really help amplify your savory dishes. And then four tablespoons of tomato sauce or ketchup. Today I'm gonna use ketchup because I have this big old bottle that's already open. If you do decide to use tomato sauce, make sure to add just a pinch of sugar to compensate for not having the sugar in the ketchup. I'm gonna add about half a teaspoon of freshly cracked black pepper and then just add one teaspoon of salt. So now all you're gonna do is mix this all up together. You can use a wooden spoon, but these mix things very well, so I'm gonna use my hands. Don't be afraid to use your hands when mixing stuff like this together, especially raw meat. All you have to do is wash your hands very well. You'll be fine. If you're finding that your mixture is a little too wet, you can go ahead and add an extra one half cup of breadcrumbs, bread, crackers, whatever it is you decided to use. So this texture is good enough for me. It is a little bit wet, but we're gonna be rolling it up so it doesn't really need to stand on its own. And if it's a little bit wetter, I feel like your embutido would be a lot more juicy. The best way to make sure that your embutido actually tastes good is to take a little piece and then fry it up on the pan just to make sure that it is flavored to your preference. There's nothing worse than waiting, steaming it, and then turns out it's not seasoned enough. So you wanna check it out now with just a little piece of meat. I'm gonna cook it on that frying pan that I've got heating up over here. Here's a little piece of meat that I cooked. I'm gonna go ahead and try it, see if we need to add anything else. So the sweetness and the sourness is perfect. I think it just needs a little bit more salt. So I'm gonna add maybe two more teaspoons. All right, so I'm gonna mix this up again. I'm gonna test it again, because we don't wanna risk it. And then hopefully we can start wrapping it up. Okay, let's test a little piece. Okay, here's a new one. Let's try it. I like it, perfect. So now we can go ahead and start wrapping this up. Remember, we still got the hot dogs and the eggs to put in there. So traditionally, embutido is wrapped up in aluminum foil and then steamed, or you can stick it in the oven. But if you're really lazy, you can just take this mixture and then cook it into patties on the stove, kind of like what I did earlier. So totally up to you. But today we're gonna do it the traditional way because then we can hide the goodies, the hot dog and the eggs inside. So first, make sure you got hot dogs. So here I've got Martin Pure Foods, a fiery red, Filipino hot dogs. They're so good. If you've never had it, go ahead and try it. This I got from Seafood City, which is my local Filipino supermarket, and they have other brands of Filipino hot dogs there. Filipino hot dogs, they taste different from American hot dogs. I can't quite explain it, so you try it at home. Let me know in the comments if you can tell what the difference is. So this meat mixture I made will make about three of these embutidos. If you do want this to be a little bit more exact, you can go ahead and weigh out the meat mixture and divide it evenly into three, but eyeballing it works. 
All right, so we're gonna guesstimate here. Just grab like a dollop of meat. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna take chunks of meat and then you're just gonna lay it flat on the aluminum foil, making sure to leave space on the edges since we are gonna roll this out and then tuck in the edges. Up to you how thick you want it, so I'm just gonna keep it a little bit thinner. Line up the hot dogs like this so that when we cut through our embutido, you'll get a slice of hot dog with each cut. So I ended up taking a whole egg and then cutting it lengthwise into fours. I'm gonna need three hard boiled eggs since I have a lot of meat left. So it's really up to how thick you want your embutido to be. You're just gonna line it up next to the hot dog. Look, I got double yolk in this egg, isn't that so cool? So the only thing left to do is to wrap up the egg and the hot dog inside this meat log. The hot dogs are already cooked, so you don't have to worry about it cooking through all the way. You just need the outer layer to cook. The one thing you should try to do though is to tighten it up so that after it cooks, you can slice it and it won't be falling apart. So just press the foil against the meat and it should be nice and taut. You can use your hands a little bit if the foil is not helping too much. Make sure you have space at the edges. Remember, we're gonna twist this up. There you go, there's our perfect meat log. So now we're just gonna wrap it up. Some people seal it kind of like a candy wrapper. Just, just close it. Ta-da, an uncooked meat burrito. So we're just gonna repeat this process, get a new piece of aluminum foil and hide our treasures of hot dogs and eggs inside. So now what I did is I put these three embutido logs in a steamer. Depending on your steamer size, you might wanna make this smaller or bigger. Just make sure that it fits before you start rolling a bunch of them up. You can go ahead and stick it in the oven if you'd like, but apparently if you steam it, it's gonna be a lot juicier. And I have a steamer, so I'm gonna go for it. Steam it for about 45 minutes. Nighttime has caught up with us. I started this embutido recipe a little bit later, but now it's ready. So I'm just gonna let this cool down for maybe five to 10 minutes, and then we'll open it up, cut it, and then taste it. Let's take this one. Ooh. Okay, so you might not be used to the color since when you cook meat, usually there's like a sear to it. But since this was wrapped up and steamed, it's gonna look like this, but it is cooked. So let's check the middle. Ooh, hot. Ooh, okay, there you go. It kind of looks like a Twinkie or like some kind of Swiss roll. Okay, now let's try a piece. Yum! So the parts of the meat that the red hot dog touches might turn pink from the coloring of the hot dog. So don't think it's undercooked. It's just the coloring. Mmm, nom, nom. So this did get a lot more hydrated and a lot more moist because of the water from the steamer. So if you did cook this in the oven, it would have dried out a little bit more, but it's fine because our initial meat base was already juicy. So either way you decide to cook it, you'll be good. Mmm. If you'd like, you can put a dollop of banana ketchup to eat with your embutido. It's really good. I got this from Seafood City as well, but I'll also include some links in the description below if you wanna buy it online. Embutido tastes really good when you eat it with rice and the side of banana ketchup. Try it out. And since we made a lot of embutido, you can actually freeze these. I've seen my parents freeze embutido before and then just thaw it and reheat it either in the oven or you can stick it in the oven to heat up again. Well, I hope you guys found that embutido recipe useful. Like I said, you can add whatever you want in it. Even if you like the raisins, go ahead, you can include some, but it's really up to you what you wanna put in here. You just want it to be a delicious meat log. When you guys make this at home, what are you gonna put in your embutido recipe? Let me know in the comments below. Thank you guys so much for watching. Again, don't forget to hit that subscribe button Give this video a thumbs up and I'll see you guys in next week's video. Bye.